welcome to the final segment for the congenital myopathy session. In the previous segment, we discussed congenital myopathies associated with protein accumulation. In this last segment, we look at a very different type of myopathy involving focal regions of protein deficiency in muscle proteins. These are referred to as the core myopathies, which is a reference to pale regions of staining seen within the muscle fibers, as observed in light microscopy staining for oxidative metabolic markers. Much the same as the previous session, we will look at the pathophysiology, patient presentation, workup, and treatment options for core myopathies. The principal form of core myopathy is termed central core disease. This results from a mutation to the RYR1 gene found on chromosome 19, which codes for the skeletal muscle calcium release channel located in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. If you recall from our discussion of muscle physiology, these are the channels which respond to focal electrochemical changes in the T-tubule system to trigger the release of calcium to flood the myofibril and initiate muscle contraction. We once again see some heterogeneity in the disease. Some mutations in RYR1 can be inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. It's believed that these mutations result in leaky channels that result in chronic elevations in calcium within the sarcoplasm. In contrast, other identified mutations are known to follow an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. In these cases, it is thought that the mutation results in a malfunctioning protein that requires two defective copies for symptoms to manifest. Whatever the situation, the altered calcium concentrations are thought to alter energy consumption patterns, disrupting mitochondria in the region. Alternatively, elevated calcium could trigger calcium-induced proteolytic enzymes in the vicinity, which would lead to protein degradation and account for the appearance of a core on histological examination. Not surprisingly, when considering the genetics involved, the presentation pattern can be highly variable. Patients may present early on with hypotonia or floppy baby syndrome. The most consistent finding is a limb girdle weakness pattern, which can result in the gradual development of musculoskeletal deformities such as hip dysplasia and scoliosis. As a result, initial workup may focus on a possible limb girdle muscular dystrophy diagnosis, which should lead to attainment of muscle biopsy samples. The biopsy sample will provide conclusive evidence. Staining for the reduced form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or succinate dehydrogenase activity should be considered in a workup for limb girdle weakness and will demonstrate the central core region of poor staining, which is characteristic for the disease in question. From here, genetic testing can be performed with specific focus on the RYR1 gene. Genetic testing is critical in the patient population due to the potentially fatal complication associated with variants in the rayanidine receptor protein. Certain medications, including a variety of anesthetics, have been found to activate certain isoforms of the ryanidine receptor protein, leading to acute elevations in calcium concentrations within the sarcoplasm. The uncontrolled cross-bridge cycling leads to muscle spasm, and the high rate of energy consumption can result in life-threatening elevations in body temperature, referred to as malignant hyperthermia. If detected early enough, the condition can be treated with administration of dantrolene, a ryanidine antagonist. The patient still needs to be carefully monitored in the days following an episode, as the calcium elevation may trigger muscle damage, leading to rhabdomyolysis, another potentially life-threatening condition. Once again, there is no cure for central core disease, so treatment is once again focused on preserving independence for the patient and prolonging their life expectancy. This concludes our session on the congenital myopathies. In the remaining three sessions, we'll switch focus away from the congenital or genetically acquired forms of muscle disease and turn it towards acquired forms of muscle disease that are contracted at a later point of time and are independent of genetics. For the next session, the topic of discussion will be the inflammatory myopathies.